Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine eBikes, and thanks for watching our YouTube channel. I hope the videos we put together every week for you are entertaining, educational. I hope you learn something from them because we enjoy making them just for you guys. Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine eBikes, and thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Today we're doing a video on how to put together an inexpensive e-bike. So one of the things is, I'm sure many of you who've done a lot of research realize that e-bikes are fairly expensive. If you buy a, a stock brand e-bike, and people complain about it, but you know, there's a reason for it. There's a good reason why these bikes are expensive. And one of them is, I'm using the case of a Stromer here, which is a very well-known, very stable European bike. And the reason is, is because you can see here in the frame, they, it's a proprietary system developed by Stromer. But, it's, but the battery is hidden inside the frame itself. So it's incorporated into the frame as is the controller, which drives the motor. Now, the problem with that is you've got to custom make these frames in order to house all these units. So this is a unit that probably runs between three and $7,000, and that's pretty expensive. A lot of people we talk to are looking for a cheaper solution for e-bikes. I think these bikes are great for what they do. This is running a 500-watt motor, um, pretty much a European standard. But if you want more control over how much power and how much range you get, which is determined by your motor and your battery, um, you can put together a pretty good bike for well under the cost of this. And again, I'm not by any stretch saying these are bikes you shouldn't deal with. So what you need to start with, of course, is a bike, and hopefully a relatively good bike. Most people have either a bike laying around in their garage or they ride them regularly. But most people have access to a bike. If you don't, if you're lucky enough in a town like I live in, where we have a nonprofit that is based downtown, that helps people teach them how to work on bikes. They also sell moderately priced bikes between sixty and hundred dollars, so you can get a starter bike that will work pretty darn well. They'll help you out, fix it if you need it. Uh, we also on our website, on our uh, on our e-bike store. Uh, have focused on a whole bunch of really, really good bikes for under $500 for just this reason, because we get asked all the time, where do I get a bike? You don't have to spend $2,000 on a good bike. So there's some really great bikes on our website. Please feel free to, to go there. But I'm a big believer this is really where it starts. You want a bike that is comfortable to ride, is well-designed, and that's kind of the foundation for the whole Thing. So either you have one and you're already ahead of the game because it's free, uh, then what you're going to need, and there's really three working parts, you need a motor. Now in this particular video we're only focusing on a rear hub motor, you can have a mid-drive which basically replaces your crank and your drive system. They're more expensive, they're a little bit more complicated, they require more maintenance. Uh, these are pretty standard. The standard size dropout here is 135 millimeters, so you just basically take out your own wheel, put the wheel in with the motor, and you're pretty much ready to go. So this is more of a plug-and-play system, whereas if you go with the mid-drive, and again, there's a variety of reasons to go with the mid-drive. It's higher torque, it's better for off-road, um, but basically, if you want to commute or you want to ride 40 miles, this is a great solution. They're relatively inexpensive. They'll last forever, and um, I can't say enough good things about them. They're terrific motors. Then what you're going to need is, of course, a battery. This is where probably the most expensive investment, because you know probably in the next three to five years, we're going to see the price of these batteries come down and their capacity go up. But right now, this is probably the most expensive piece of putting together an e-bike. But you can still, with this whole combination, do this for under $1,000 and have a great commuter bike, a great recreational bike. So, um, but right now that's where the industry is in terms of pricing, it's expensive. And then the third piece, which is the brains of the operation, is your controller. This is about eight inches long by about three and a half inches wide and about an inch and a half deep. And this is pretty much plug and play. These pieces control everything from your pedal assist to your brakes to your motor and on and on. And very straightforward, very easy to connect. You can mount it under your down tube. You can mount it on behind your, your seat tube, uh, depending on how much space or configuration of your bike. But so you need the controller, the battery, and the motor, and a bike. 
And that's what you need. And so I hope you're going to watch this video. I hope you like it. If you do, please subscribe below. Thanks again for watching our YouTube. With the technology available today, anyone can put together an inexpensive e-bike quickly and easily. As I said earlier, it all starts with the bike. Sometimes the bike that has been sitting in the garage unused for 10 years is not always the best place to start, but I've talked with plenty of people who've gone that route. Whether you have a 500 watt motor or a 1500 watt motor, it's still a bike. So choose a bike that is in good working condition, is comfortable to ride, and one that you would feel comfortable riding for many, many miles. Once you have the bike you want to use, choose the motor that you want. You can choose from a front hub, rear hub, or mid-drive motor. As I said earlier, the mid-drive motors are more expensive and labor-intensive, so for this video we'll use a rear hub brushless motor. Choose how much power you want based on your riding needs, commuting, hills, flats, distance, etc. Your e-bike will include the appropriate controller based on the required wattage and voltage that is required for your motor. You can get a great rear hub kit for under $500. To install the rear hub motor, place your bike upside down on the ground and remove your rear wheel. Your rear hub motor fits the standard 135mm dropout. Install the wheel with the washers in the correct order. See our video on installing a rear hub motor. Spin the wheel to make sure that the gearing works properly. Next, find a good place on your bike to attach the controller. Make sure that the wires are pointed in the direction of the bottom of the bike. You can safely attach the controller to your frame with two strong zip ties. Make the appropriate connections with your motor. Again, see our video on controller installation. Lastly, it's time to choose a battery. Make sure that you choose a battery that has the correct voltage for your motor, whether it's 36, 48, 52, or 72 volts, but make sure it's the correct one for your motor. The voltage is your bike's power. Then you need to determine how far you want to go. That's determined by the number of amp hours the battery has. The higher number of amp hours, the farther you will go, and of course the more expensive the battery. Once you've connected the battery to your bike frame using the water bottle screws, connect the red and black wires to your controller. Turn on the battery and make sure that everything works. Once you've tested your new e-bike, cover up your controller wires. You can see our video on dealing with e-bike wires. Now for under $1,000 you have an e-bike that can go as fast if not faster than a $7,000 brand e-bike. I hope you liked this video. If you did, show us you liked it by subscribing below.